all, I would like to thank the organizing committee for giving me the opportunity to present some of my work uh, done in the United States and but here in Egypt. Uh, so the title of my talk today is going to be Down Regulation of the Homing Receptor CD62L is not essential for the anti-tumor response. Responses of adaptively transferred I12X vivo expanded CD18 cells. I know the title is too long, but I'm going to explain everything now. And so, as we all know, that the cancer is a major health problem in all the world, and according to the World Health Organization, there is 13.7 million uh, Americans that has cancer every year. And uh, as we all know, that the standard anti cancer therapy is surgery. And uh, surgery is not effective, but doesn't cure the, um, doesn't cure the tumor, metastasis, or prevent the tumor recurrence again. And the radiotherapy or the chemotherapy is not effective, but prevent the tumor uh, recurrence. So, so we are looking for a new treatment for the cancer. So what's the new treatment for the cancer? So the new treatment for the cancer is all the scientists are now thinking about the cancer immunotherapy. And cancer immunotherapy is one of the most potent now uh, kind of treatment that treat cancer. And it's also one of the most important questions is how to kill the cancer cells without harming the normal cells. And there's different types of cancer immunotherapy, like antibody uh, based therapy. We have uh, some in the clinical trials now, like rotoxmab, Herceptin, and you have uh, gene therapy, nucleic acid driven by DNA or nucleic non viral like ribosomes or naked DNA, and their cell based therapy, like dendritic cell, NK, and B cells. And one of the most interesting um, type of cancer immunotherapy is the adaptive T cell therapy. And there is a lot of limitations of uh, cancer immunotherapy, like not all the antigens of the tumor are the same. The tumor can be can mutated and it's highly expensive. So, um, so the novel approach for the adaptive T cell therapy is not only the adaptive T cell therapy, it's going to be the combination between the cancer immunotherapy and the chemo uh, therapy. And this is the example for the adaptive T cell uh, therapy. And as you can see that uh, we can uh, take the biopsy from the, the tumor and we can uh, activate them or stimulate them inside our in vitro and then we can infuse them back inside the patient. And this slide is the most important slide I'm going to present it today. Because what I'm going to say is going to change a lot of concepts that you know about immunology. And the first time I presented this in the American Association for Cancer Research in USA, they told me, you are crazy. <laughs> this is not right. Um, so as we all know that to, uh, to induce anti-tumor response, uh, the T cells, the dendritic cells become activated in the danger cells. There is some interference and the dendritic cells become activated. And there is adhesion molecule is called CD6 to A. And this is, is responsible for the trafficking of the T cells to the lymph node to become activated. So the dendritic cells become activated, then the T cells goes to the lymph node and become activated, then goes to the tumor. And this is all we know, but this is not right. There is another mechanism or another, another best way for this to mediate anti-tumor response. And I'm going to explain it. So, and uh, the CD6 cell is not only responsible for the trafficking of the T cell, it's responsible for the dendritic cell migration to the lymph node. So, our aim of the work is to analyze the function and the fate of the in vivo activated tumor specific CD6 cell. Uh, and one of the most uh, aggressive models is the middle one. And we looked a lot for a long time to find the proper model in the mice that uh, mimic the melanoma model in the human. And we found the female transgenic mice, and it has the B16 melanoma, and it has the, the striking similarities like the one in the human. And the beauty about this model is that we can track the donor cells in vivo, like the, the donor cells has markers is called Thai 1.1 and the host cells is CD8 only and negative for the Thai 1.1. 1 
So I can differentiate between the donor cells and the host cells in vivo. So, and this is the typical model that we use, and we already published this, and uh, it's called PMAN Adaptive Transfer Method. So what we do is we just take the spleen and make the spleenocyte suspension and add some cytokines like uh, IL-12 or uh, GB-105, and this is uh, from the melanoma, and activate them for three days, and then inject them into tumor-bearing mice, preconditioned with chemotherapy. Or we can do the late activation for, uh, for seven days and recapture them with IL-2. So the problem was is that we need to lock down the gene that expressed the CD6 12 in mice. And this was the problem. The problem is how we can lock down the gene in the mice and we can track the cells at the same time. So I spent three and a half years just to, to generate this mouse to be able to track the female cells and it's not down for the, for the gene. And we use the same model, we, we extract the spleen and make the spleen size suspension and add the IL-12 and then inject them in the preconditioned mice with CTS. And what we found is, well, we already published this before, that the female cells that is activated with IL-12 can uh, completely regress the tumor. And when we compare the BMA cells that is already knocked down for the CD6 cell, it shows the same results like the BMA I12 and completely able to regress the tumor. And this is, shows that the, this is the standard chemotherapy for the, this is one of the most aggressive models for the metastatic lung and the lung is BCCF10, and this is the standard chemotherapy, it's called cyclophosphamide or CTX, and this is the cells that is uh, BMAN, the C612 positive, and the one in the last row is the C612 uh, knockdown, so this is mean that there is no difference in the absence of the C612. So this is mean that the T cells were able to uh, give anti-tumor effect to be able to regress the tumor uh, in the lung. And the lung weight, uh, as you can see, this is the normal lung weight, and this is the cyclophosphamide, and this is the CD6 soil positive, and this is the CD6 soil knockdown. So this, uh, the second thing we move to, to check the survival or to see if this cell is going to survive for a long time or not. So this is the CTX, this is the CD6 soil positive, and this is the CD6 soil knockdown. And at day five, and at day 12, and at day 19, and at day 34, they show the same resistance, like there is no difference between the, the, the presence of the C6 cell or lacking the C6 cell. And this is was in the subcutaneous tumor condition. And then this is in the metastatic tumor condition, shows the same percentage of the donor cells, as you can see here, in the day five, and day 12, and day 19, and then day 34. And then, as you can, as you all know that the C6 soil is a key parameters for the differentiation of and the generation of the memory cells, and uh, it's with the CD127 can differentiate between the vector cells and the memory cells. And the expression of the CD127 it didn't affect you in the absence of the C6 soil. So the absence or the presence of C6 soil didn't affect the expression of the CD127 or the generation of the memory cells. So then we move to the six so We need to look for the homing or the, the homing pattern of the cells. So we looked in the spleen in the spleen and in the liver, in the blood, in the lymph node, and the bone marrow. And as you can see, that there is no big difference between the CD6 to L positive or the CD6 to L negative. Then we uh, we look at the to see if the if this uh, if the cells and the female cells and the or the lockdown uh, mice they were able to generate the CD8 T cells memory cells or not. So we uh, as you can see this is the the, the, the at day zero we inject the B16 melanoma and at day seven the CTX then we did the adaptive transfer and we bleed the the mice before the vaccination and then we vaccinate the mice and then we bleed them again and the vaccinate, and as you can see that the mice show that recall capability for, 
after the vaccination. And as you can see, the difference is what? 3.49 and then became 14.2. And the anti-tumor effect of the cells were able to also to regress the tumor completely and uh, the mice survived for, I think it was like for two years. And the conclusion of uh, this study was that we were able to generate anti-tumor protective uh, memory cells in the absence of the cd 6 f And the second was that the, the, migra the impaired migration of the lymph node doesn't affect the differentiation and the function of the memory cd T cells. So we will go back to this. So this is me that the, the, the T cell doesn't have to go to the lymph node to become activated and to be able to mediate anti-tumor effect. So we were still looking for the other mechanism that we would be able to activate the T cells and become activated and kill the tumor. So we don't need the T cells, and this is, is really good for the, maybe we can use this for the, uh, in the lymphoma patients so that, that because the lymph nodes are a nasty environment and they are full of the uh, suppressive cells like MDC and TREC and the T cells are not functional so that we can inject the C6 to L so not down with this in the patient so they don't have to go to the lymph node and become suppressed. And this is already published uh, this year in Journal of Immunological Research. And this is some of the papers that we already published with Dr. Muhammad Salim. And, and this is the poster. And finally, I would like to thank you, uh, Professor Muhammad Abib Salim from Tanta University and my colleagues from the University of Miami Miller School of Medicine, uh, Dr. Diaz Montero and Dr. Montero, and uh, Spina Polinesian Jan and Maria. Thank you.